What's going on all you gamers, here we are with some more Hades, and today I'm going to be going over all of the boons that you can acquire from the gods that can pretty much help you out in any build you're running. So if you want to know what boons are really good to pick up, no matter what you've already picked up already, then stay tuned, let's come up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always, Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox. Why not hit that subscribe and bell icon? I'll bring you all the latest, greatest hints and tips, and builds, guides, and just some fun gameplay. But for today, you're here to see what boons you should be picking up if you're running into them on your travels. Now, up until a few days ago, I was pretty much a beginner to this, but as I've been playing, as I've been picking these up, they've really helped me to up my game and just absolutely smash through those stages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of the gods and tell you which ones you can put into any build you're running just in case you're not sure or in case you're not sure of what option to pick if they do come up. So we're going to kick it off with Zeus. Now in all honesty, Zeus probably isn't the best example. I would say the only main one he's got is kind of a revenge one. So it's Heaven's Vengeance. After you take damage, your foe is struck by lightning. Revenge damage of 80. Now it might not sound like much, it's probably not the best one to pick in the game, but revenge ones are still nice to have on your build. If you put it up a little bit it can really help out, especially if you've got a very high health build, and it's pretty much always going to kick in if you're ever getting hit. So if you're someone who gets hit a lot, especially as a beginner, this can really help you to get through the early levels and mid levels, until later on they've got a little bit of health about them. But definitely, probably for Zeus, his best one to chuck into any build. And moving on to Poseidon, and for myself, this one right here was definitely hands down the best one you could chuck on. Any build, this is perfect, it helps you, it can really help out when you get to the last boss as such, when you can actually spend a little bit more. So, Ocean's Bounty. Any Gemstones, Darkness, or Sharon's Obol, basically you're going to be getting 50% extra. This can really, really be nice, and like I said, it can really help you to get some stuff when other times you may not have enough money to buy it, this will net you that and make sure that you can get a lot more boons, a lot more health, and at the end, if you wanted to save it all, you could get yourself something nice before the boss encounter. All in all, this is definitely one that you should think about putting on, and it works out a lot more favourable than you'd think, just for the fact that you can allow yourself, if you get this early, spend a lot more in Sharon's shop and stuff, and just make sure that you've got a lot more boons and things. Now next up, and we've got Athena. If we go to her list, I would highly recommend having one of these three. Divine Strike, your attack is stronger and can deflect really really nice divine flourish your special is stronger and can deflect with special damage at 60 percent whereas the one before was 40 percent out of the two i tend to favor this one but it's all down to your personal preference but again even better than that just down the bottom here one that's probably far superior to all of them divine dash your dash deals damage and can deflect you are dashing every which way but loose every single time you play this game Trust me, if you can, chuck this on your build, it's one of the best things you can put on for survivability and it's just a great one to have on any single build you're running. Next up, and we're going to go over Aphrodite. Now the first boon I would definitely say is really good on her is Dying Lament. When foes are slain, they damage nearby foes and inflict weak on them. That means that they're going to kind of hit you for 30% less if they're going to hit you. This one is really, really good to have in the bank and just to make sure that everything is going to hit you a little bit less if they are going to hit you in the first place. A really nice one to get on and a really nice one if you're starting out and you're a little bit new to the game as such. Next up, and life affirmation. Any percentage of your health chamber, rewards are worth more. Bonus life gain, 30%. Any single time you can pick this up, any time you can get more life in this game is absolutely invaluable. Grab this, you won't regret it. By the time you get to the boss, it will definitely mean that you've chopped up your health and it will definitely help you out. Up next, and we've got Artemis. Artemis, again, it's usually you trying to build around their talents, trying to get that big damage from the crit, but she has got one that's really nice, I find. And that's this one just here. Although it's not going to do the most damage in the world, it's something that's consistent damage, and it's something that's constantly hitting, and that's support fire. After you cast or hit with an attack or special, fire a seeking arrow. It only does 10 damage at the start, obviously it can go up, but you are constantly hitting stuff. It's like guaranteed extra damage, and it just means that a lot of times, especially if you use your special very often, you're going to be kind of 
hitting things much further off in the distance and doing a lot of damage before they've even got you. Again, it doesn't have to be your special. Every time you're doing moves, you will be getting that extra little bit of damage. Not gonna light the world on fire, but I found it a fun little one to use, and I really think it can help out to take out a lot of foes throughout your journey. Next is the God of War himself, and that's Ares. Ares I actually find a lot more useful than he probably should be, so I'm going to go over the ones that I found to be very helpful as I was making my way through. First off, and he's probably the only one that I'm going to say this for, but his call, Ares Aid. Your call turns you into an impervious blade rift for 1.2 seconds. Rift damage starts off at 30 and its maximum is 5 seconds, but that duration is guaranteed in vulnerability. And obviously if you can get this at higher tiers, you're going to do a lot of damage on bosses or whatever you need to nuke, whilst having the fact that you cannot be hurt. Probably one of the best calls in the game in my opinion, and just a really nice uh oh moment, you've got to do this just to get that final kill as such. A really nice one to use, and definitely worth having in any arsenal if you can put it on. Next up, and urge to kill. Your attack special and cast deal more damage. Bonus damage starts off at 10%, again obviously it goes up, but it's just a really nice increase to everything you're doing. I chuck this on whenever I can if I have found him, just because it's a nice little added bonus. A really nice one to put into any build for a little bit more damage to everything. Again, and yes we're still on Ares, Ares I find to be very helpful with a lot of his boons, and that's Blood Frenzy. After using Death Defiance, deal more damage that Encanter. Encanter bonus damage starts off at 15%. This can really help on really tough bosses like the last battle with Hades if you're tending to struggle. If you're going to die in battles, this right here is really really good for trying to up your damage after you've taken that fall. And last, but definitely not least for him, is Battle Rage. After slaying a foe, your next attack or special deals more damage. Damage bonus starts off at 100%. This is really, really good as you make your way through. Honestly, it's one of the strongest things I've seen, and it can really help you to make your way to those bosses without taking too much damage, just because you're nuking everything. I really like this one. Again, it starts off at 100%. You can make it higher. Really good in pretty much nigh on all builds. Another god with absolutely amazing boons in a lot of situations is Dionysus. If we go over his stuff, he's got three that stand out in my opinion far more than any others. First off, and I would say definitely, is Premium Vintage. Gain health whenever you pick up your nectar. Gain health whenever you pick up your nectar, and receive one now. This can mean that if you're going that healthy route, you can just jump it through the roof kind of thing. Honestly, it's really, really good. Obviously, if you're not going to be picking any of these up, it's not going to be the best for you, but you'll probably get a few of them on your travels. It's going to replen your life. It's going to make it higher. If you're going for some of those hearts as well, you can get your health well over 300. Really, really nice for making your way towards those tough battles. And especially if you're struggling with some of these bosses, this right here can help you in abundance because you'll have a bit more health about yourself, meaning that you can last longer in the fights. Next up, and just an absolutely amazing one if you start levelling it up, and that's After Party. If your health is low after encounters, restore to the threshold. The life threshold at lowest is 30%. This can really, really help out. It really can. If you can chuck this into your build somehow, it just means that you're going to survive a lot easier. If you're kind of beginning out or you're getting hit a lot, this really can help any build to stay alive and make it further in the maze. And lastly, and you can see there's a bit of a trend here, everything with Dionysus is pretty much to do with health if it's not about getting drunk. We're not worrying about that at the moment, we're worrying about our health. So strong drink. Using a fountain restores all health and gives you bonus damage. Just absolutely amazing. If you can manage to find this, grab it, put it on. Bonus damage starts off at 3% per fountain you're going to be getting a lot of extra health, you're going to be getting a lot of damage, it's just a great one to have on as a boon. If you can find this, chuck it on, it works in any build, and it's going to again help you out in abundance. Next, and we've got Hermes. Hermes is quite a niche character actually, he's not going to be giving you the most damage for your buck, but what he does do, he does very well. So first off, if you haven't got a Fina's Dash, this one right here can be an amazing one to have in any build. Greatest Reflex, you can dash more times in a row. 
it's going to chuck on an extra dash, it's going to mean that you can get away, it's going to mean that you've got a lot more chance of not hitting any traps, it really is a great one to have on any build and very often just being able to dash more can be an absolute lifesaver, especially in some of those boss encounters when there's huge AoEs on the floor. Not to be counted out in any build, this right here can definitely help save your life and the versatility of it works in absolutely any build. It is a really great one to put on. Next up, and we've got Side Hustle. Now, this one at face value sounds pretty bad, but you've got to realise you're going to be going through 50, 60 different rooms, give or take. Each time you enter a chamber, gain a bit of wealth. Bonus per chamber at the start is 10. Honestly, this mounts up. If this is a choice, it's probably not the best one in the game, but if it's a choice between this and a few others that aren't the best, this one can really help you out, especially if you're saving up for that end boss and you want to get yourself something nice before you go in, this really can help you out in that situation. And lastly, Greater Evasion. This one right here at higher levels is really, really good. When it's low, honestly, I found it a little bit underwhelming, but Greater Evasion, whenever you are hit, you have a chance to dodge automatically, and the dodge chance at the start is 10%. As it goes up, it really can help, and it can mean you can use it with other things. This at higher tiers really can help you to kind of negate a bit of damage, so if this is a choice and there aren't any better ones on there, definitely chuck it on your build for a bit of extra survivability. For the next god, and we've got Demeter, and she has two that really stands out in my eyes and one of them is something that I didn't think would be very good, but I find this works in any single build, and that's your crystal beam. Your cast drops a crystal that fires a beam at foes for 5 seconds. I found this to be absolutely overwhelming. If you've got a lot of casts of those crystals, and if you manage to raise this up, this can absolutely nuke anything. If something stood in place, if there's enemies, if there's a boss, if you can manage to hit it with all of these, it's gonna, its health is just gonna drop drastically. As you rank this up, it goes up an awful lot. Even though it looks a little bit lackluster, so cast damage goes down to 8 for 5 seconds. But that's per beam and it's every 0.2 seconds. So actually, when you've got 3 or 4, it mounts up ridiculously targeted at the same enemy. Trust me, if you can manage to put this in your build, this right here for a cast can mean you can drop it on the floor, run away, and just survive another day. Next up, and I would say rare crop. If you can get this really early on, this can be absolutely amazing. Your boons become common, then gain rarity every three encounters. Random boons affected starts off at one. Honestly though, this can be really, really good, especially if you manage to get it on the one boon that you really want from an early level, you can boost that through the roof and do an absolute abundance of damage or whatever you're aiming for. A really nice one, I have only managed to get this once though, because I don't think it comes around much for some reason, but when I did, I ended up with an absolutely great build at the end. Honestly, if you can pick this up, Rare Crop is a really nice one to put on pretty much any Not build. And finally, we can't leave out Chaos. So if we go over his, he has an absolute abundance that are really, really good. But there's one that stands out, and that is Favor. Boons have an 11% chance to be rare or better. Anytime you can get it where your boons can go higher in rarity is absolutely amazing. Favor is definitely one you should put on if you've visited the underworld and you've managed to find this one grab it and hopefully you'll get yourself a really nice build with a bit of luck as you venture through and last but again definitely not least is this one right here affluence any sharon's obel that you find is worth 45 percent more again if you're trying to make your way through the dungeon if you can pick this up if you're trying to save up for the end boss, this one really, really helps. It allows you to get things throughout your journey. It allows you to get things when sometimes you wouldn't have been able to because they're just going to cost too much. Or it allows you to save up for that end boss and net yourself something nice. Really, really good one. And any time you can manage to boost up your obol is well worth having in pretty much any build. Because most of the time it helps you to pick up the other boons and such. Whereas sometimes you wouldn't have been able to or you'd have had to pick another option. 
Right, all you gamers, that's pretty much my top picks for anything you can chuck into a universal build. They work in pretty much anything, they help you out in abundance, and they're really, really strong. So if you find them in your choice list, then chuck them on, and I'm sure that it will definitely help you out. But that's just my opinion, so if you've got a different one, chuck it in the comments. As always, guys and girls, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox. Take care, I'll see you on the next day.